بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم على حبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to a new episode of You know, you remember the title? Yeah. You forget Reaching, it. Out. Yeah. Reaching, Reaching out. Reaching out. Reaching out. Good. Great. Now let's discuss the fourth tool or the fourth <clears throat> approach that we can use when giving da'wah to others. That is introducing the ABCs of Islam. In the last two episodes, I talked about explaining the articles of faith briefly. We talked about the articles of faith, and then we talked about the names of Allah, the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can share with others to discover more about these beautiful names belonging to Allah alone. After that, we can go to explain the pillars of Islam. Now once they understand the belief, this is like the theoretical aspect, theory, iman, i'tiqad, it has to do with belief. Now let's go to the practical aspect. This is what you got to do. If you want to become a Muslim, we have to follow these things, or you do the following things. Explain the pillars of Islam. You know them. Number one, the testimony, a shahada. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. Yes. So this is the gateway to Islam. Yes. For those who would like to know more about Islam and how to become a Muslim. After belief, if you believe in Allah, his angels, his holy books, his prophets, the last day, and you believe in destiny, then we have now to practice, to say, yes, I believe in Allah, I bear witness, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then, number two, performing Prayers. Salah Prayer. or prayers. prayers. To perform salah or prayers. We have five prayers or five times. We perform salah five different times. Number three, a zakah. Giving zakah. Alms giving or zakah. It's just use this Islamic term. This is number three. Number four. Fasting. 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 Fasting the month of Ramadan from dawn to sunset. sunset. There, are, there are rulings governing each and every pillar. But I will not discuss any further because I would like just to discuss this in a brief. As I mentioned here, explain the, the pillars of Islam briefly. This is like an introduction. When he wants to get more, okay, here we go. We can spend two hours, three hours talking about the pillars themselves, the do's and don'ts dealing or concerning this pillar or that pillar. You can focus on when you deal with a new Muslim or a person who would like to become a Muslim, you can focus on the testimony, a shahada. Because he has to, you know, take the shahada first, right? To become a Muslim, he has to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes. And you explain that to him. This is the gateway to Islam. If you like to become a Muslim, you have to say that, believing, you believe. Yes. Convincingly, you are convinced about it, that Allah is the only one we worship, Muhammad is the last messenger. We follow and we believe in him. Say, okay, now I want to become a Muslim. Say, okay, say, 
Ashhadu, and we say Ashhadu, and make it just simple for him. Don't say the whole thing. He might get confused. Say Ashhadu, say Ashhadu. Allah ilaha, Allah ilaha, illa Allah, illa Allah. He would repeat after you. So give him time to repeat it, to understand it. Then you explain it to him in his language, in his own language. Does it Ash, have, yes, brother? Does it have to be in Arabic or is it okay if it yeah, was in his Yeah, he has to language? say it. The Shahada must be said in Arabic. You can't tell him the meaning of it or the translation. This means, and before that, you got to do the job, you know? Mm -hmm. you, now we talked, you talked about the articles of faith, the names of Allah, explaining many, many things. Now he came to this point. I want to become a Muslim. You explain to him, to be a Muslim, you have to utter or take the shahada. Say after me, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. If you say it sincerely, honestly, convincingly, you become a Muslim. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Then, right after that, when he says the shahada, when he utters the shahada, right after that, you teach him about prayer. Yes. Right after that, he must, if it's, for example, Maghrib prayer or Aisha prayer, he, he will go to make ghusl, to take a shower, and then he can pray. Even without saying, you know, if he cannot recite the Al-Fatiha, he just, you know, says, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah, there are some rulings concerning this part. But I would like to stress this. Talk with him about the testimony, shahada, and then how to perform salah. Before that, we will talk about what? At-tahara. How to purify himself after taking the ghusl or the whole shower. And then how to make wudu. You got also to teach him how to, to, to perform the wudu. In a very simple way. Take it easy with him. Take it easy. He might need some time to learn. It takes time to learn. But inshallah it will be easy. Tell him this is okay. You can do it. Inshallah and you know after two, three times it will be easy for you. Just let him take it easy. So these are now, I mean, the, the practical steps that we can take to help others to become Muslims. Now, let me go to the next part. Fifth, special keys. There are special keys we can use with some people. With some people, you can use these special keys. Not with all, just, just, you know, these are good for some. For example, when you deal with the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, you can talk about the common ground. Oh, people of the book, this is the invitation of the Quran. This is the call of the Quran. Say, O oh people of the book, come. To our common ground yeah. between you and us. Yeah. Between yeah. us and you that we worship none but Allah. Yeah. Then you talk about the one message. Just one message. There is just one message we can share with them. In the Bible, you can refer to the Bible for those for example, some, I met some, when I speak with them about the Qur'an, I t I'll tell them, I, I, I say to them, the Qur'an says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ The Christian might answer me saying, but I don't believe in the Qur'an. This is not my holy book. Yes. I believe in the Bible. So for some, this might be a good key. Is it clear? Yes. Sometimes 
الله سبحانه وتعالى tells in the Quran قل هاتوا برهانكم إن كنتم صادقين produce for or bring forth your evidence bring your evidence give your evidence what is your evidence so they say our evidence is the Bible their holy books okay let's let's read the Bible you find many verses in the Bible in the Old Testament Al-Ahd Al-Qadim and the New Testament Al-Ahd Al-Jadid many verses speaking about the one true God for example you can quote or you can refer to Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord this is from the Old Testament, from the Bible. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. one Lord. Just one. There are many, many verses. I'm just giving you just one example from the Old Testament. And let me go to the New Testament. The Christians might say, yes, but can I find it in the New Testament? This is the word given to Jesus. So they are more, you know, concerned about their own, the New Testament. They believe in, in it more than the first or the, you know, Old Testament. You say, okay, sure, we can find this in the New Testament. For example, go to Mark, chapter Mark, verse 12. You know, you find in the book of Mark, 12, 28. This is the reference. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mark 12, 28, 29. A scribe came to Jesus. A scribe? Writer. Yeah. A writer. Yes. Katib. From the al kataba One of the scribes. Came to Jesus and asked him. But let me tell you about the question after the break. Inshallah. جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام Closing the Gap Why Closing the Gap? In this program, Sheikh Yusuf Estes and Omar Dunlap are going to discuss how to bridge the gap between peoples of different cultures and orientations the gap between males and females Muslims and non-Muslims the East and the West. Human beings feel like that they're being slighted one way or the other. The gap between the youth and the elders, the gap between various status in working, the work field and the education, and then trying to provide solutions for these particular problems. I was talking about the oneness of Allah, the message of Tawheed in the Bible, and more specifically, I was talking about the one God in the New Testament. In Mark 12:28, it tells us that a scribe came to Jesus and asked him, saying, what is the first commandment? Jesus replied, according to the Bible, Jesus replied, the first commandment is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one wow. Lord. So now Jesus is uttering these words. When the scribe came to him, asking him about the first commandment, al-wasiyya What is the first commandment? God Jesus replied, Lord. Lord is one God. The, the Bible says what? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, Lord. one, one Lord. Lord. Did you listen to that? One Lord. So I ask Christians in my presentations, did Jesus say, 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is three. Has he ever mentioned that? No. Never. You don't find it. Actually, in many, in many places in the New Testament, Jesus said, God is greater than all. Listen to that, please. Yes. He said, Jesus said, God is greater than all. God, according to the biblical use, he says, my father is greater than I. He is greater than him. So are they equal? No, if not. you say that he is greater than me, does that mean that they are equal? No, no. no. they are not. In, also in Matthew, you find this text. He said, I of my own self can do nothing. Listen to this, please. Pay attention to it. Jesus said, I of my own self can do nothing. As I hear, I judge. Yes. Did you yeah. understand yes. it? Yes. Now I, I ask Christians, can God do anything or not? I mean, he says, I can do nothing. So let them answer this question. Okay, now let me go to another point. So just one message, as I mentioned. Just one mes message. What is the evidence? The dalil? From the Quran, you know it. MashaAllah. We have many, many verses talking about the oneness of Allah. Okay, I would like one of you brothers, one of you to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas and give us the translation. Yes, Brother Muhammad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد The translation goes like uh, Say, O oh Muhammad, Allah is one and only الله أحد الله الصمد uh, He begets not nor was he begotten لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد and there is none comparable to him good yeah. good so this is like you know straight to the point قل هو الله أحد say O Muhammad Allah is what one and only one only one subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah الصمد Allah or God is the absolute subhanahu wa ta'ala لم يلد ولم يولد. So this is, you know, this ayah gives yeah, us not. more information about the qualities, the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me go to the first part. You remember in the Old Testament? In the Old Testament, here, O Israel, Moses said, Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. This is in the Old Testament, Al-Ahd Al-Qadim, or what we call now Al-Tawrat, Torah. In the New Testament, what can be called now as, you know, we call it Injil, given to Isa, alayhi salam. Jesus said what? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And in the Quran, we find what? Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Wahid. So in the Old Testament, Wahid, one. In the New Testament, one. Jesus said so. Muhammad said what? One. 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 The message is just yeah. one. one. So this is what we can share. Again, this is what we can share with others to invite them to the truth of you know, concerning the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the Bible, we can share, as I, I mentioned, this is a key that we can use with some, some people. Not necessarily to use it with all. Some say, I don't believe, even in the Bible, among Christians, they say, I don't accept the Bible too. So for some 
who are, you know, they might refer you to the Bible. Did the Bible say so? Yes, sure. Yes. I can refer you to Mark, Matthew, or this chapter or that chapter. The next part, six. This is the sixth part, secrets of success. But I will leave this, inshallah, for the upcoming episode, The Secrets of Success in Giving Dawah to Others. Now, let's discuss some points regarding what I just mentioned. Remember, when we talk with non-Muslims, go back to the basics. Don't think, don't think or imagine that they have a great deal of information. They might not have that deal of information. So deal with them little by little, step by step. As I mentioned before, there are some misconceptions, misinformation about Islam and Muslims. So try, try to clarify these things. Go back to the basics. You remember the formula? Do you remember the, the rule I yeah. mentioned before? B to B, B to B, B to B, back to basics. So that's, let's go back to basics when talking with non-Muslims. Some believe that Muhammad is God or son of God. Because they have this kind of understanding, since Jesus is God or son of God, according to some, they say, Muhammad is same way God or maybe son of God according to Muslims. But is this true? No. no. You can ask a child, you know, two years, two years old child, ask him about this. Is Muhammad God or son of God? He will give you the definite answer, no. So let's clarify these, you know, misconceptions about Islam and Muslims. Allah, some think that Allah is the God of Arabs or the God of Afro-Americans, for example, in some places. Belongs to the Negroes, they call it. Some in Asia, in France, in, in other areas, they link or associate Islam with certain nationalities. For example, in Germany, they might think, when you talk about Islam, it, the Turkish, okay, they have a majority. So they link Islam to a certain race or a group of people. So we have to be careful to you know, approach them in the nice and wise way. Talking about the articles of faith or the pillars of Islam. Some of us Muslims believe that when I introduce Islam to others, I have to start right away talking about these things. Not necessarily. We came here to discover that you can start with what? You start with what? With the basics. Basics. With the basics. 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 Yeah. And before the basics, Brother Muhammad? I can say first impression first of all. Mm -hmm. and, first impression? Uh, yes. Good. And then uh, the simplicity and uh, the number of, I cannot remember them now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, keeping a smile. Keeping a smiling yes. and Good. sincere Good. and heartful uh, behavior. Good. Good. I talked also about defining your terms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's very important to define your terms. And then we talked about showing the beauty. The beauty. Yes, beauty Showing the beauty. To show the beauty to others about Islam. Yes. This is the beauty of Islam. Let's present it to others. Good. The remaining time I would like to, to give you, inshallah, within this you know, remaining time, I would like to give you a chance to ask any question or any comment, please. Do you have any question or a comment? like to make? Yes, brothers? Anything comes to your mind? 
Yes, Brother Am. Almighty Allah says, um, it's a good verse, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ Wait. O oh, Muhammad, we haven't sent you, but as a mercy for the entire world. So Muhammad is for the whole and the entire uh, mankind, for the, the entire world, in fact. Wait. His Wait. message is general. Wonderful. Yes. So Muhammad yes. is yes. sent as mercy to all mankind. With this, I would like to conclude thanking the brothers here with me in the studio. Also, I would like to thank the brothers and sisters watching us. Thanks for all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.